Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Ksenia and I make videos for people who, like myself, are going through the immigration process. I'm not an immigration attorney. My videos are based on publicly available information, my own experience and the experience of my subscribers. And the purpose of my channel is to give you guys the confidence to go through this process completely on your own. Today's video is an updated guide on how to put together your family-based green card packet. So this particular packet organization video is for marriage-based packets since those tend to be the most complicated out of all family-based green card packets. However, you may use this video to organize your family-based green card application case based on your particular circumstance. I will also review some form filing tips that is posted by USCIS and I will also link that resource under my video. So this is approximately what your marriage-based green card packet may look like depending on what exactly you are including in your packet and we will talk about different variations as we go through. This packet is just a sample that I made and it mostly includes the actual forms that you will need to include with your case. However, if you are also including evidence, as you can see, depending on how much evidence and supporting documents you're including with your case, you may end up with a significantly thicker packet. So we will take this packet apart and I will show you exactly what I decided to include as we go. I must remind you that this packet is for those who are eligible to file their case concurrently. I will link a video right here talking about the general list of forms and applications that you will need to include with your family-based immigration packet. Just to summarize, the forms that you would typically include for marriage-based is I-130, I-130A, I-485, I-864, I-765, I-131, and I-693. And if you're submitting this packet for any other immediate relative who is not your spouse, you would need to include essentially all the same forms with the exception of the form I-130A. So first and foremost, at the very top of your immigration packet, you will include passport style photos. You can get them done at USPS or Walgreens or CVS, for instance, but you may also be able to take these photos yourself at home as long as you follow all the correct uh, dimensions of the photographs and print them out on a photo paper that is two inches by two inches. There is a debate on how many passport style photos need to be included in your file in general. There are variations. If you read the form instructions for each of the forms that you include in your packet, each application requires that you submit two passport style photos of the applicant and for marriage-based cases you will also need to include two passport style photos of the petitioner for the form I-130. However, based on the experience that others have shared with me, they have been able to submit the entire concurrently filed packet with only the two photos of the petitioner and two photos of the beneficiary. Again, this is for marriage-based. If you are submitting this packet for any other type of relative, you do not need to include passport style photos for the form I-130. You would only then need to include passport style photos of the actual green card applicant on the form I-485. And if you are filing these forms by mail, USCIS does recommend that on the back of your photos, you write the names of the people in the photos. So in our case, for example, this is Jane Doe, and on the back of the photo, I will write her name. And in this sample case, she's also the petitioner. And for example, let's pretend that she's filing for John Doe, her spouse. Um, as you can see, this is a sample, so there's nothing on here, but 
I will also write his name on the back of his passport style photos. So in this sample case, I only decided to include two photos of each. And your passport style photos should be put in an easily accessible envelope or a plastic bag like this and attached securely to your file. Do not attach photos just by themselves because there is a possibility that they will get lost and also do not staple the photos to the applications. The payment or the medical exam should go next in order. Depending on what kind of payment method you are using, using. So for instance, if you are using a personal check or a money order, it would all obviously go next right after here. And if you are using a credit card authorization form using the form G1450, you will include it after the medical exam. We will talk about the medical exam in a minute. However, one of the frequent questions is, can you submit multiple money orders? And the answer is absolutely yes. If you are submitting both applications, I-130 and I-485 by mail, you should be including a money order, obviously for each application. The money order limit is $1,000. So if you have to split between two money orders, that is perfectly fine. However, keep in mind that you should not be combining the fees and splitting them down the middle for different applications. So you should really separate payments for each application. This one is for the I-130 and these two are for the I-485. So the money orders will essentially go next. However, if you choose to pay for your applications using a credit card, you will have to fill out the form G1450 and include it with your packet. Just like with any other payment method, you should not be combining the fees for both applications. You must fill out a separate credit card authorization form for each application. So one would be for the form I-130 and the other one would be for the adjustment of status. Again, the fees are subject to change. So please make sure that before you mail off your applications, you double check the USCIS fee calculator to make sure that you're paying the correct filing fee and do not forget to include the biometrics fee. The other question that I frequently get is who should be paying for the applications? Anyone can pay. It doesn't even have to be petitioner or beneficiary. It can literally be anyone, a friend, a parent, a neighbor, as long as you submit the correct payment for the forms and as long as you make sure to include the correct applicants or petitioners name. If you're using a credit card authorization form, please also do not forget to sign this form in black ink pen. If you submit it without the signature, the application will be rejected and sent back to you. The payment should be included at the very top of your file. If you choose to include your medical exam also with your adjustment of status application, you will have to also include it at the top of your file. The medical exam must remain unopened, but please make sure that you also have a copy of your medical exam for your own records. So this will go next in order. Let's talk about the next things that should be included in your file. And that is a cover letter. Again, a cover letter is not a requirement by USCIS, but it is good practice because it helps you not only organize your own file, but it also helps the adjudicating officer find documents in your packet and have a quick uh, look through what is included in your file. I made two sample cover letters depending on your circumstance. This cover letter is for those of you who are maybe filing both applications I-130 and I-485 by mail and that is the sample cover letter that I have in my video. The cover letter may be a couple of pages long for you depending on your particular circumstance and how much evidence you 
you are including. If you have, however, already filed your form I-130 online and are sending the rest of the forms by mail, you may choose to use a different cover letter that only includes the form I-485 and necessary evidence in addition to the online receipt notice that you have filed the I-130 petition already. It can be downloaded directly from your USCIS account under the documents tab and you do not need to wait for the official I-797 notice of action to send with this packet. You may simply print out the online receipt and include it with your application application. Again, depending on what the case is for you, if you're sending everything by mail, then obviously in that case, you will include the Form I-130 and all the documents associated with it. If you are filing I-130 online and following up the rest by mail, then all you need to include is the receipt. So this will go next in your file. Now let's talk about colored dividers. Those are recommended by USCIS to make sure that the applications in your case are easily located. As you can see, I printed out what exactly is here. So for instance, these two forms, the next would be I-485 and I-864. And towards the end of my application, I also included employment authorization and the travel application. They're not required. They are optional. It is up to you how you organize this packet, but this is how it helped me when I was filing my case. If you would like to be notified by email that your forms have been received, instead of having to wait for an official letter from USCIS, you may also choose to include the form G1145, which will allow USCIS to notify you when they received your applications. You will need a separate form G1145 for each application you are submitting or each application you would like to be notified about. So in my case, I included two forms G1145, one for the I-130 application, as you can see, and the second of these forms I included right before my adjustment of status application. I chose not to print out the additional two forms for the travel and employment documents, but you can do that as well. And this form G1145 must be included before the application that you would like to be notified about. Before you mail your forms, please double check the expiration date of your forms and the addition dates of your forms. Make sure that when you're printing out your forms, you do print the little scanner code at the bottom. In addition, make sure that you do not forget to sign and date your forms. And the other thing that I see a lot of forms get rejected for is people not including the very last page of these applications, which is the additional information page. Even if your additional information page is blank and you do not provide any additional information, you must still include it with your application. If there are pages missing, your application will be rejected and sent back to you to resend. So please make sure you do not forget about that. The other question that I frequently get about organizing this packet is if you are supposed to print everything in color or black and white? And the answer is whatever you prefer. If you're able to print in color, great. If not, black and white is totally fine. Another question that I get is about bona fide marriage photographs, for example, for your case. And I do have a video talking about how to attach them to your file. I will link it here. You should not be including photographs just on their own. They must be securely attached or printed on regular legal sized paper and same applies to any other evidence. This part of your packet will probably be the thickest part simply because for marriage-based applicants, this is where you will be including evidence of your bona fide marriage. If you already filed this form online, you obviously do not need to include it again in this packet and you do not need to include 
the marital evidence again. All of that would have been already uploaded to your online USCIS account. So these two applications, I-130 and I-130A, go next in our file. Moving on to the adjustment of status application. So again, I used the color divider and included the e-notification form here and then moving on to the form I-485 and I-864, the affidavit of support. And then all the evidence and supporting documents required for these forms will be included at the end. If you are unsure what supporting documents go with this form, I also have a video about that. All the videos and resources I'm mentioning in this video will be linked under this video. And final two applications can be combined. It's up to you. You can use a color divider for each, but these applications are fairly short. So I decided to combine them both and include them at the end. And now if we put everything back together, Let's talk about some general form filing tips that are also recommended on the USCIS site. When you are filing your cases to a lockbox facility, you are allowed to use sticky tabs at the bottom of your applications. Do not place any sticky tabs on top of your applications, in the applications, or on any other sides. They should be included only at the bottom. There is another debate whether or not you can use paper clips or giant clips to hold your files together. Now, you should not be stapling anything and you should not be hole punching anything, but a big clip can be used to hold your file together. And if you are filing for multiple relatives in one envelope, for example, you can uh, separate them using these big clips. Another tip from USCIS is you should not be using correction fluid, also known as whiteout, and you should not be highlighting anything in your forms. When it comes to submitting supporting documents, you should not be sending any originals. You should only be submitting copies of all the documents. Everything must be printed single-sided only, nothing double-sided. You should not be including any kind of digital media with your files, such as flash drives, CD disks. If you are unsure where exactly you need to mail it, I do have a video talking about how to find the correct filing address for your application. You can put your packet directly in a a document mailer from whatever mailing service you're going to use. So for instance, if you are using USPS, this is what the envelope may approximately look like. And on the envelope, you may also write what exactly is included in this file. So I hope that you found this video useful. Please let me know if you have any additional questions. Before you do, however, please check out all the resources that I have mentioned here. I wish you luck in your immigration process. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up and I hope to see you guys in my next video.